Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And if she be like a sister, in, in other words, if your spirit and her spirit are agreeing, then you can have some nice sweet time to bless God and to adore him and to let him know that you are happy. In the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is in this place. We love you and we worship you. Lift your sweet hands up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him honor, give him praise. Give him honor, give him praise. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be Jesus Christ. Amen. Tell your name, but you shut up very fast. That's why you are, your life is so limiting. Yes, you are very quick to shut up. Give him a shout. Ushindi wa roho yako una manifestiwa na mdomo yako. Isiai kukuondoka kwa kichwa. Well, the moment you keep quiet, it's like when you do a zip. Christians are talkers. Let's start one stay in your heart. Do not be very comfortable when an environment makes you keep quiet. We are learning spirituals. Hallelujah. Even when you are not like talking, let there be a humming of your spirit. Mm. Put it on movement mood. Give him another one. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Yes, yes. You see, see, and, and he knows. You see it? When you trigger him, he responds. That's him. Try again. Glory to Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory to Jesus. Please take your seat in the presence of God. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. I'm born again. I thank the Lord for his goodness. We take this time to welcome those of us who are watching in, uh, from our channels that God has made available. Wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing, the reasons why you are watching us. Probably you could be sick. You could be in a hospital somewhere. You could be traveling. Worse still, you could be in the prisons, but thank God that technology has come that has made up what reach even those of us who seem to be behind bars. You are behind bars, but your spirit is not behind bars. You can reach out, and the Lord of all grace can take you and promote and change your life. In the name of Jesus, we have been standing, when, if you follow us well, when we began uh, at the beginning of the year, our our, con, our, our our discussions have been preparing the spirit man for the future. So deliberately by the spirit of God, we have taken time to really talk to us and to teach us and to train us by the spirit of God on what I would call generally the spirituals. Because we say it, God is a spirit. Jesus speaking to the woman by the well, he said, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The body of Christ has worshipped worshipped God in truth, but it has not really cared to understand the other requirement, which is worship in the spirit. And number two, because man is a spirit. Man is a spirit. Never ever forget that. Man is a spirit. Paul speaking, he said, I pray that you may be whole, body, soul, and spirit. That's what he said. Man is a spirit. He lives in a body. He has a soul. So we must understand the dynamics. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Unfortunately, many of us have paid much attention to the natural body. Because this is where we reside. This is where we dwell. But this, this is not all there is. Why are we learning the spirituals? We are learning the spirituals because the, book of, the Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by God, not from things that are seen, but from things that are unseen. Meaning the spiritual is the mother of the natural. So we are understanding, we want to get to know 
Blessed be the name of Jesus. If you don't understand, you find yourself being always a victim. And we have so many victims in the world that are proclaiming, cursing, overthrowing, trying to do this and that. And all you need is knowledge. Amen. Blessed be the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we are just trying to explain why we are running these things. Because there are things you can stand at home. Like how to cook chips. You, that, you, that one you can stand at home. Amen. We said last week, every, every, every team requires a coach. Every team requires a coach. And every big team has fans. But the coach is not responsible to the fans. Even in the body of Christ, we have fans. The Bible calls them multi multiple, multi multitudes, mixed multitudes. That's what the Bible calls them. Those who know, those who see, those who experience and join the miracles of God, but they have no particular destiny to which they are committed to. But we must, you can, like now many of us, those of us who watch football, you know, depending on the team that you are fan of, you have even bought their jerseys. Like I've seen some of us wear Chelsea jersey, which is all good. But that does not make the coach responsible to you. You can wear even the shoes they wear. I'm not saying don't celebrate. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring you somewhere. Glory to Jesus. The returns these companies make cannot be wired to you. Because, you see, it's not about whether you love the, the club or not. Question is, are you a member? There are things that are reserved for the body of Christ. Amen. It's not a question whether it's, it's your wife. Are you born again like her? There will be limitations. Amen. There is a sweetness you cannot take from her. Only if you are born again. Not that she's not willing to give. It can't come. You are a bad conductor of that life. Unless you be born again. Don't condemn us unless you be born again. It's not an option. It's the only option. Amen. Can we get into this stuff? Tell your neighbor, are you willing to learn? Ask your neighbor, do you want to learn some of these things? And the Lord has done me well. You know, sometimes, no, I'm tell, not telling you, tell you that. You know, I just ponder, I look at myself, I look at the things God has made available to me. I look at my journey. And I, and I, and I tell you honestly, I, 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 I need to know how I will behave when I finally see him. Face to face, when I'll be before Elohim, when I'll be standing before the ancient of days, when I have my story and the progress and the journey has taken me, when I'll be looking at my life and the transformation by his finger, I, and when, he, when he asks me questions, I, I need to know how I'll answer him. Why? Because even myself, I'm a marvel to me. That's why my... It's very difficult for me to be in his presence and not shed tears. It takes me a while to really get my composure before him. Purely because sometimes I think you may discover who I am and set me out. Jesus is so good. So loving. Hallelujah. I have not seen such a father. I'm telling you. We are not trying to make him look good. We can argue on his goodness, but we cannot argue on his impact in our lives. You can deny his existence, but you cannot deny our progress. So we are telling you the reason behind how we are. Amen. Let's move in. First John chapter 2, verse 27. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let's read this, and then I'll be telling us what are we, what are we discussing today. First John chapter 2. Verse 27. Let's lead together, people of God. Let me hear you read. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is true, and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. We, Mama, Mama spoke to you last Sunday 
I believe it's Sunday but one if my memory serves me right and she spoke to us on the impartation of the Holy Spirit Sunday we took time to discuss on the impact of the Spirit of God unto our lives today we move in in the same dimension to discuss the two anointings, major anointings by the Holy Ghost on the spirit of a man. And I, now, now, and I wish to just issue a disclaimer. This, for your own interest, develop a desire to know these things. And I say that one again slowly. Develop a desire. I'm not trying to create an appetite for you to love what I'm preaching. No, I'm simply telling you as a messenger of God why the children of the kingdom have had what we call peronial cycles of defeat. So let's just move into this stuff. We could, we could be doing a lot of lighting today, so I need that you pay attention now. I need that you... If you have a pen, if you're traveling, you can record some of the stuff because this is important. So we begin, we are moved on, the first one, because of time limitations. But before we move in, I need you to understand that the Holy Spirit is not anointing. He is a person. He's not an anointing. He anoints us. He does not necessarily need to use the anointing he has anointed you with to do that which he has to do in your life. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. So we begin where it begins. That which we have read about. Which is this first lever. This is what is called the saving grace. This is the saving grace. This is for your walk with him. So the first lever is the saving grace. It is for your walk with God. Without this unction, you can never know God. Without this unction, you can read the Bible cover to cover and not see God. The translators of the scriptures were not necessarily born again. You could be a theologian, and I'm not opposed to theology, and not see him. Because see, this Bible says, the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually designed. This is the anointing that draws men to Christ. The anointing that draws men to the Christ. The perpetrator of this, the driver of this, the one who powers this is the Holy Ghost. Listen, look up. Jesus paid for our salvation. He's the one who paid for our salvation. But the one who brings you into that salvation is the Holy Spirit. Without him, man cannot be born again. Because he says, by the same spirit, you are baptized into Christ. He's the one that baptizes us into Christ. Jesus said something. Oh Lord, John chapter 6 verse 44. Let's lead this stuff. No man, oh God. I want you to lead this. Can you lead for me? No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draws him to me. Is, give us a naughty version. I'm trying to explain to you something. For no man, no one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draws them to me. See, and as a result of that drawing, he says, at the last day, I'll raise them up. No one can walk into salvation without the unction of the Holy Ghost. You can have your baptist name. You can become a leader in the church. But for you to know the truth, then this unction must be released to you. The purpose of us interceding from our people who are not born again. The purpose for us praying for our workmates and colleagues is because it takes 
the finger of God for them to receive Christ. It is the unction of God that overrides and convicts the soul of a man unto salvation. You understand what I'm, what I'm talking about? Bible says, John chapter 16 verse 8. We are dealing with a fast liver. Let's read together. 16. Who, who is there? Who are we having there? 16 verse 8. Who are we having there? Okay. And when he comes, Jesus talking about the Holy Ghost. He said, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin. Listen. It is this unction of 1 John chapter 2 verse 27 that convicts your conscience. It is the one that shows you your sin. It is the one that makes you feel to testify. It is the one that makes you feel to confess. When he takes hold of your spirit, he makes you break down. And mostly is the one responsible for tears of salvation. This anointing does not require an environment because it does not come into contact with your body. He stays in your spirit. He does not leave your spirit. He does not flow. This is not an outflow. This is an inflow. It is the one that makes you know the truth. The one that makes you know the truth. This is the anointing that makes sinners desire a savior. This is the anointing that makes sinners desire a savior. Look up. You are threatening people. Let me talk to the pastors and the ministers and the evangelists. Those of us listening, please pay attention. People don't get born again because you tell them about hell. Many of them that are walking this life are living in that hell. People don't get born again because of being threatened. Noah tried it for 120 years, telling them of the front that is coming, and they did not budge. Listening to what I'm saying. Moses tried it. I told him, away with your God. We are going to make our own and return. It takes this finger for the heart of man. And does not, not necessarily always require a powerful minister. It requires powerful intercessors. You have not heard what I've said. Because the Bible says a soul was going to Damascus. It was not a crusade. He met him. His name is Ancient of Days. Bible says, he said to my Lord, who are you? He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. This anointing is not transferable. You cannot say, in the name of Jesus, receive Christ. This anointing makes the realities of God or the promises of God reality to you. Why? Because let's go back to 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. Let's go back there. I'm enjoying this. We are discussing your salvation. Salvation is more than burning cigarettes. Hmm? It's more than quitting drinking. It takes more, it's more than living a holy life. See, holy life is not synonymous with righteousness. Righteousness is of the spirit. Which you receive as a gift. He is the carrier of that righteousness. What is righteousness? The ability to stand before Elohim without a sense of guilt. That which makes people who are former criminals boldly share the love of Christ and not be ashamed of their past. 
Halleluja. Days, let's lean together now. Let's lean together. Let's lean together again. Hey, you are really right. But the anointing which you have received is of him and abideth. It abideth. I've said that. It abides in you. It stays with you. That's what it means. It's part of your spirit. You are mingled into you. It says, and you need not that man should teach you. You listen. Once he comes in, you wake up to the fatherhood of God. You know that you know that you know that God is real. You may not be able to explain how, but there is beyond reasonable doubts, the conviction in your spirit, Jesus is alive. Hmm. This, this anointing teaches you all things. In this anointing, there is no error. There is no lie. Blessed be the name of Jesus. You, see, you cannot have half-baked salvation. Only if you have not met him. But when you meet him, I tell you in the name of Jesus, this is the anointing that deals and addresses the issue of sin in the life of a believer. This is the anointing that will deliver you to heaven. You lose it, you are going to hell. Please look up. If you have to lose all the parts of God, if I mean that, all dimensions of God, this is the last one you want to lose. After ministries are done, after churches are done, this will be the final question. Who has brought you here? If it is not him, he will say, I didn't know you. He is the one re responsible for the entry of your name in the book of life. This anointing teaches you how to relate with God. It trains you. It tells you. It talks to you. When you are out of his will, it talks to you. It tells you. And when it is strong, it causes you to walk a journey different from the rest. This is the unction that made David when he tore the scat of Saul. Bible says, and his heart troubled him. This is the unction that makes men feel it is not right. To do that. It is not right to do that. When you hear people talk about his conscience is dead, it's simply saying this anointing, this unction is not at work in that vessel. Hallelujah. This is the one, if I may use that term, that makes people surrender. Oh, and call it Christ. This is the anointing that our parents. Operated with. When we came up with the anointing that we'll be sharing about, we confused this with a lie in their life. And we saw them like they were incomplete. But many of them are going to heaven when some of us, if we are not careful, are going to hell with our miracles. This is the one that enables people board heavenly bus. This anointing does not affect your environment. When it moves in your life, it doesn't make you rich in your environment. He is not responsible for the growth of your children. His assignment is you. Hallelujah. He eradicates all arguments about God from your spirit. When you are born again and you know you are born again, and there are arguments as to whether God is real. You need to check this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is the liver that brings to you revelations about the nature and the character of Christ. The nature and the character of Christ. Your search about God is put to rest when you encounter him. Look up. This is the unction that quenches all the thirst of men. Ah, this is the unction that kills 
addiction. This is the unction that frees the spirit of a man. This is the unction that kills familiar powers over your life. This is the unction because he, when he comes, is the one the Bible calls the spirit of truth. The one the Bible calls the spirit of truth. He brings such a transformation in your life. Somebody met you yesterday, he meets you today, listen to your language, and he can tell something has happened to you. Hallelujah. When he moves in your life, even your parents will testify, your children will testify something about you. There will be nothing around you, but something about you. When you open your mouth to talk, something about you. Your testimonies, your prayer language changes. Hallelujah. You may not know much, but when you talk, I interacted with some of these old people, elders in the church I grew up, and I could meet them in their gathering. They were not many, they were not gather many, like 10 or 9 of them. And I tell you, there was an, an hour of the presence. There were no miracles, because this unction does not perform miracles. Oh God. But I tell you, there were no kinanda. There were no worship team. But when they begin to worship this unction, we have a lot of drama because we have the other one without this. It is the unction that makes you call God Abba. It's the unction that connects you with your source. This is the unction that tells you Someone greater than your grandmother lives. This is the unction that gives believers boldness. You can tear them apart. You can tie them. You can burn them in fire. And they are not giving up. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. This is the unction that delivers to your heart the love of God. The one that delivers to your heart the love of God. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 8. Let's see together. Romans chapter 12, verse 8. Verse 3, sorry. Mm -hmm. Let's read together. I'm not hearing you read. Hey. Okay, but Romans chapter 5, verse, one, verse 5, sorry. We'll be coming back to that. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Let's read together. And, and hope maketh not ashamed. Why? Because... The love of God. I'm not hearing you. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Believers should not be trained and taught about how to love. Why? Because they have received love as a package. Listen, no believer should struggle. To love his enemy. If you find you struggling to love your enemies, you are operating with your flesh. This unction, when it wakes up, the first thing it tries to do and fix in your life is to make you be at peace with all men. Oh God. You may not be greeting one another, but it's not possible for them to greet you and you keep quiet. Even when you pass, you are, there is a desire. Should they greet me, I'm going to answer back. When they don't greet you, there is something that says, bless them, keep them. Oh, count this not upon them. It is not of you. Go right to Jesus. When you are not born again, you may not be able to love your enemies. Even when you say you love them, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's just a self-control. The true agape is not at work. It takes the finger of God to love. Devils have devil agents, but they don't love their agents. Because the devil has not known love. This is the unction that gives you the fruit of the spirit. The Holy Ghost does not have fruit. It's the one, this is the one that makes your spirit produce the fruit. So you can be having the other one and you don't have a fruit. Look up. You can operate in miracles. And you are cold blooded This is the unction that gives you the character of Christ. We have seen men of God that are so powerful. But sometimes when they get off, you wonder, uh, 
What is the issue? <laughs> His name is salvation. Salvation is not just believing. Believing is the enter, entering of that. When you receive Christ, you are now put in the registers of God. You are the first teacher, the teacher you are given to teach you. You are class teacher. His name is God. The ancient of days. When you are booked in, he teaches you all truth of the scriptures. And he makes them real. Hallelujah. He is responsible for the joy of salvation. When you error or you sin, and he is grieved and he keeps quiet. That's why you feel you are not happy. That's what David was saying. Restore to me the Holy Ghost. And take not from me the joy of salvation. It's an unction of joy that covers your spirit and protects your spirit from the beatings of life. Whatever may come, this one, like a ranta, make sure that your navigation to one's home is without error. Because in him, there is no error. There is no right. When he guides you, you will not miss heaven. Let me explain to you again. When he leads you, that's why we sing, he leads me. He leads me. By his arm, he leads me. This is the one we are talking about. He has not lost. Jesus said, all that you have given me, none have lost. Save for the son of perdition, that the scriptures may become true. When he, the, anyone, anyone who is brought to him by the father, the Bible says, he will not cast away. He can't lose. This one does not lose. Hmm. Nobody can backslide. Because after giving his life to Christ, there was no one really to teach him and keep him. And train him and keep him. Because Paul, when he got born again, the Bible says, he went to Arabia and he stayed there 14 years. And the Holy Ghost was his teacher. Why? Because he, the Bible says he will teach you in all truth. Truth about the Father. He will teach you. Oh God. Let's read Second, First John chapter 2 verse 27 again. Tumesoma vitambu mingi. And we begin, need to begin here. We need to. Let me hear you read. I'm not hearing you. Many, many, many of us in the church, we want the anointing to do. This is not the anointing to, to do. This is the anointing to become. This is not the anointing to do. This is the anointing to become. The anointing to do can rest on anything, including a donkey. Don't you hear the donkey talked? But the donkey is not registered in the book of life. Because the, that anointing did not make him a recipient of salvation. This anointing <laughs> is only found in vessels of clay. Uh, it is only that we are on a, on a platform that some stuff we can't talk. But I know we'll talk some stuff on this. Hallelujah. This is the unction, look up, that makes you call God Father. Not even angels of heaven call him Father. They don't have this. <laughs> How many more minutes we have? Are we out of time? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Master, we thank you and give you praise for the people who have listened to us have received this. If you have not known God and you have not received Christ in your life, this is the unction you need. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that he is Lord, that he died for you and rose from the grave, then you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. You will be saved. So you, all you need to do is believe with me today that Jesus is Lord. Believe and confess today and then you are catapulted, courtesy of this anointing, to become a new person. The Bible says, he who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Receive salvation. Receive Christ. If you have received Christ, you can lie to us. Visit the church near you. Let share with the people, share with the brethren that you have found him. And then they will be able to guide you into other dimensions. In the name of Jesus. 
Father, we thank you and we bless you for your faithfulness and for the things that you are doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Give the Lord a celebration as we... As, as, as we bring...